Hi, this is Ruth Royal from Youth Pledge for Employers, um, and I'm really happy to be with Will Alderton from Norton's Dairy. Hello, Will. Thanks so much for giving up your time to talk to us today. Hello, Ruth. No problem. So, first of all, tell us a bit about Norton's Dairy. So, uh, Norton's Dairy is a, a family run business. It's been in the Norton family since the 40s. Oh, wow. Um, and it's developed since then, really. And today we are primarily a, uh, a dairy farm, um, but we have an arable side as well. So we grow some crops, but most things are directed towards the cows. Uh, and then a more recent addition to the farm is uh, our own pasteurizing unit. So that is Norton's Dairy. We, we use the milk from our cows and we process it on site into a product that we can then deliver or sell direct to the customer. Wow, so actually it's sort of more kind of diverse that, than I realised in that sense. Would you tell us a bit about the different sorts of jobs that people do across the dairy? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's kind of split into two sort of streams. We've got the processing side right. and the farm side. Okay. And while there is some overlap with some staff that work on both sides, the, the sort of jobs are uh, definitely come under those two headings so I think it's easier to start with the farm side because that sort of follows the milk logically yeah <laughs> so um, <laughs> the main priority on the farm is the daily care of the cows and that's what takes the most of the time yeah. um, so we have two full-time members and two part-time members who right. who basically oversee almost every aspect of caring for the cows as well as managing the wider farm um, so a normal day would consist of ensuring everyone has been fed and watered, everyone's on the fields and paddocks that they're supposed to be on, and everyone's coming through the milking robot as needed. Um, right. So on our farm, we, we milk by, by robotic means, so okay. it means it's automated to a certain extent. So milking isn't such a physical job on the farm, because in theory, it happens automatically the cows do it themselves but there's still you know the wider uh, tasks to carry out so we've still got the mucking out and the daily cleaning that has to be done um, the robot and bulk milk all has to be serviced and cleaned and ensured that it right. keeps going um, so that's that's really what most of the jobs look like on the farm it's all centered around the cows um, and then the wider farm, the arable side, actually doesn't take up that much time because a lot of this is maybe a few jobs that are done in the spring. Right. And then the crop is left to its own devices to a certain extent until it's harvest time. So, yeah, that, 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 that's what keeps those guys busy. It's all about animal husbandry, mostly on, on, on our dairy. And then within the, the processing side, um, that's basically from receiving raw milk from the farm. Right. We then process it ourselves. So we have people that are responsible for pasteurising and bottling, uh, labelling and packing. We've got um, people that go out on the delivery, delivery rounds to make sure that it's getting to all the right customers. And we also have um, some people that are in the office receiving the orders and then getting them you know, ready for the, for the the team in the dairy to, to sort and i guess i mean they're, they're two sort of very different skill sets by the sounds of it and perhaps even again like you know different again within the processing you know if there's a team sort of sorting orders and sales another team sorting processing um what sort of thinking probably about the farm first of all yeah. what sort of skills uh personal qualities do you feel sort of make people successful at Norton's Dairy working in the farming side of things? Yeah, so we have quite a few people come through the farm, um, not necessarily as employees, but as part of work experience or yeah. as part of the apprenticeship. So we do see quite a number of people come through and the most successful ones are always, it's, the, it's those sort of cliches that everyone hears we want somebody who is reliable, hardworking, and 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 conscientious. You know, they need to be if they if they're turning up, if they're keen to work hard, even if they don't know the job, if they're keen to learn it, these are the people that are always the most successful. Um, 
that that is how you get the most out of it yeah if you're willing to dive in get on with it ask for help when you need it that is always the most successful ones and those are the ones that tend to stay the longest and maybe move on to being employed with us um yeah it's those are the main oh, things you want somebody who is yeah gonna get on with it really um and that's that's a very important personality trait in somebody i i i think like you say it might be things that people hear regularly but you hear them yeah. because they're true <laughs> they are true you want somebody that is going to be hard working and show that they can commit to it and when they're gonna when you say we need you here at seven o'clock you're gonna be here at seven o'clock it is so important and that was something i was going to ask you what sort of working hours do people work on the farm so uh in total or well, on the farm so we've got the four employees in total um the day tends to start for the first of them at about five in the morning okay and those guys will be working probably right through till five in the evening right. and then the part-time staff that come in to support during the busier times of the day they may come in at seven um some of some days they'll only be there for the morning some days they're there all day it depends on what's going on but the day is normally for the full timers, it's normally 10 to 12 hours. And for the part timers, when they're in, it'll be six to eight hours, probably. Um, but again, farming and exactly what you do is very, very flexible. And it depends on the day. It depends on the time of year. Um, yeah. And that's why it comes back to we need somebody who is flexible and reliable and, you know, willing to try. Um, it doesn't matter if you haven't done it before. You just just get on with it. Oh, and I, I that's something really interesting you mentioned there about the season. So you might be working long sort of long days with early starts, but actually that might be different depending on the time of year that you're working in. Yeah, um, and, the, and the type of job that needs doing will change depending on the year. So the way we are set up, and this isn't the way every farm is set up, um, our cows are in the barns in the colder months, right? And are out to grass in the warmer months so that means in the winter there's far more yard work to be done a lot more mucking out cleaning out fresh straw bedding down moving cows around whereas in the summer they are out on the field so you don't have all that work so then the, the sort of shift changes and the focus is then on the other jobs that maybe you're not getting done in the winter that you need to get done in the summer um so yeah the pattern definitely changes depending on the time of year that's really helpful to understand how that how that really affects you know the type of work that you might be doing and how that in turn affects when you are needed and um and the hours and and where you might where you might be as well obviously sort of more in sort of on the yard in the colder months and maybe more out and about um in the summer months yeah, absolutely. And what about for your processing teams is that uh, is that is that similar or is that so there is a certain seasonality to it um and that will come with peak demands for things like cream and butter and things that will be peak at christmas and peak in the height of summer when there's lots and lots of fresh strawberries and things you'll see yeah. changes in demand um it's a little more consistent um than the yard work where you've got this definite change um but there will be seasonal changes in the dairy but we try and keep it um, as consistent as possible really um, but a lot of the, the like we were saying about skills on the farm those are the same skills we look for in somebody in the dairy you yeah. need somebody you can rely on you need somebody who's going to work hard and you need somebody who is going to take initiative and not be afraid to say actually I don't know what to do here can you show me yeah fine you know um, that's exactly what we want in someone someone we can rely on with the and um, with the processing side of things, well, um, do, what what might somebody's sort of typical day look like if you were um if you're if you're working in the dairy? Yes, yeah, so the um everyone that works in the dairy is part time. Some okay. maybe are heading towards thirty thirty five hours in a week, while others are only at about six. It just depends on who they are and, and yeah. what job they're doing. Um, but that's because of the nature of processing we pasteurize to order so our raw milk comes from the farm in the morning and is processed and packed and sent out on delivery that morning wow um, 
So a typical day for somebody in the dairy would be arriving around seven, mm -hmm. um, get the pasteuriser on, get the milk coming through, uh, and you will be date stamping and labelling ready for that session, because you'll, you'll know how many of each type you're producing. Um, and then it'll be a case of getting everything into its bottles or right. packets or whatever. We're quite hands on. We don't have a huge automated system. Mm -hmm. um, it is we are filling the bottles manually on a bottling wow. machine. We are putting the caps on manually. We are labeling manually. We're crating manually, moving it into the fridge, then loading the van. And that all happens pretty much as a production line. Yeah. Um, and then it's straight out on delivery. Wow. So and then following that, you've got a couple of members of staff that will go out on the delivery and a couple that will remain back and do the clean down because obviously with a food product, it has to be properly cleaned and sterilized at the end of every single shift. And so then you'll have some that stay back and uh, ensure it's clean, ready for the next day. Gosh, that sounds very busy and also very interesting in terms of kind of getting that and then seeing and sort of seeing that journey, the milk coming through and then getting it in the bottom and then getting it out of the door to people. That yeah, sense absolutely. of like we've got every every step is done on the farm. We've got every step straight from the cow and onto the shelf. And you know, if you're buying the milk from the shop on the day you you it was delivered, potentially it's less than eight hours from the cow to being on the shelf. So that's God, our that's main amazing. sort of selling point. That's what that's what we are all about. And so that's why we've set ourselves up this way. Um, what yeah. do you think? Um, what do you think makes um, sort of these jobs interesting or good jobs? What what have you liked about your job over time? Because I'm guessing you've done this type of work for a while. Yeah, I've been part of the farm for nearly 10 years. Um, wow. I've been working um more in the past sort of three to five years on the farm um but and i'm involved in most areas um sort of helping where needed really and then overseeing certain things and i think the best thing for me about it is it is so varied um you can there are so many different sorts of jobs that need doing but if you're willing um you know it, it you can have a go at lots of different things so we've got members of staff who will go from processing in the dairy in the morning to working on the farm in the afternoon. So they've, oh, wow. they're have doing the process backwards almost, but they, they're seeing yes. all of it. So they're involved in all of it. Um, yeah, it's definitely the, the variety. That's that's what I would say is good. And, you know, with farming and with a lot of jobs and industries, you don't know what's going to be thrown at you. And, yeah. um, so it does, it keeps it, keeps it interesting. We have other sort of, sort of smaller uh, enterprises that right. come as part of the farm. So we do offer tours and visits for school groups and other community groups. Oh, fantastic. Uh, and while that doesn't take up a huge amount of our time in a year, um, it's all part of it. And so I deliver some of the tours and so do some of the other members of staff. And so that's nice. It's always nice to welcome a different generation or people from outside the farm just to see what we do, really. Um, so yeah, another another aspect that's varied. Oh, absolutely. It's um, it sounds that um, though, though you might think of just one thing, but there's actually lots of different things happening um, there. Do you think as well? Um, well, do you think that actually that there's things about sort of you in terms of like your personality that have kind of made you really enjoy this job? You obviously like the variety, but are there sort of other aspects of how you are that have made this a good fit for you? Yeah, so I, uh, yeah, as you say, I enjoy the variety. I enjoy being outdoors. A lot of, oh, what, very little of the time are you in an office environment. Yes, there wow. is office work to get on with. And, you know, you've still got certain things that have to be done, like the ordering and um, even with the farm, you know, it's everything has to be registered and monitored and recorded and you have your inspection. So there is some office work. Um, but a lot of it is outdoors or out and about or with other people. Um, and that's definitely what suits me the most. Yeah. Uh, you're not you're not in one specific spot all the time. It can be varied. 
Uh, and I think that um, I think for some people that's going to be a huge pull, isn't it, to have not only that variety but also the sense that you're outdoors so much, um, doing different things. Have you um, did you go straight into farming from something that you studied, or did you do anything else first? Yeah, so I um, left sixth form. I didn't go to university because it just wasn't for me yeah. at the time. Um, I went straight into a job. Uh, as a learner mentor in an agricultural college so supporting right. learners who just needed that little extra yeah with the academic side um, and is that what you'd studied no 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 I, I've so never just... studied anything related to agriculture no no I've I've I just did you know the normal core subjects at, yeah. at school and, and sixth form uh, and then I've maintained that support role throughout my career to date so I've been a teaching assistant in schools and wow. um, I am now I'm part-time on the farm and also part-time elsewhere so I still work as a support worker oh, when I'm not on the farm again the varieties I like I like having a yeah. little, sort of a little change middle of the week which is very nice so I, I kept that going all the way through um I also did I did do a degree in the end I did it with the Open University um, oh. not because I had any particular thing in mind that oh, I wanted to lead to this job it yeah. was I chose a subject I was interested in and got on with it so I did it I did that for me obviously it's a good yeah. good thing to have um but yeah I did that alongside and then now I find myself with this lovely balance of farm and support worker so I'm sort of I've, I've basically managed to to include absolutely everything I enjoy in a selection of jobs and um, that's what suits me the most. Oh and oh, do you know what Will I think that that is so clever because actually if you find something that you enjoy doing and you get to and if you enjoy doing different things and you get to enjoy both of them and you organize your life for that to happen I think that's a I think that's fantastic yeah. it's so important to enjoy what you do. Yeah, and you know there are certain things that can be transferred between them. So obviously, I said that we do tours and things on the farms. We will get yeah. whole year groups from schools out, and so my work as a teaching assistant or as um, a support worker as I am now, um, it all comes into it. You know, it's all skills that I can use through both, yeah. which definitely helps. Um, yeah, and oh, it, no. it just comes. It comes back to the variety. That's what I like. I like having that variety of, of things to keep me keep me interested really you know yeah. it's, if it's going to be a, a job that you're going to do for a long time you want to be interested in it at, to a certain extent at least oh absolutely absolutely um jobs uh, you spend a lot of your time working in life and that should definitely be something that feels like a, you know that you enjoy rather than something yeah, that you absolutely absolutely and i know from my personal experience which may be slightly off topic but I said I didn't go to university straight from sixth form because it didn't it wasn't a fit for me mm. but it can feel like that's the only option then and it certainly yeah. did for me all my friends went to university and then I was still at home but actually there's nothing wrong with that it, it was it was the right choice for me and that is I'm very happy with <laughs> that decision yeah. it wasn't at the time necessarily but it definitely has become a good choice I think that's really interesting to sort of reflect on and I guess sort of probably like for the final note in terms of our conversation it'd be really interesting to hear if, if you were to go back and have a conversation with um, you know young Will yeah. uh, just starting out um, in that position what bit of career advice or what would you would you say to yourself now with the benefit of hindsight I would definitely say don't don't put so much value on the traditional route so it doesn't have to be a conveyor belt from GCSEs to sixth form to a degree where you go away um, it can be for a lot of people but it doesn't have to be and um, you know it felt like at the time it was like oh no I've made a terrible decision I'm missing out but it's it's all worked out really well I was able to follow things that I enjoyed I was able to come back to do a degree a little later on in a way that suited me much better 
And uh, yeah, so that my main advice, we don't put all the value onto a route. There are lots and lots of options available, all as valid as each other. Oh, I think that is absolutely brilliant advice. Thank you so much for your time today. Well, it's been lovely to talk to you. Yeah, you're very welcome.